a, a thing that I I've learned from your group and the people in your group is this idea uh, of oxalate dumping. So yes. when people start to so so when they make that connection and they they start to learn about oxalate and they go oh my god this is the thing that I've tried everything else I've, I've I was a vegan or I was a vegetarian and I was just eat I was drinking you know spinach smoothies and I was eating you know uh, cashew butter and almond butter and all these things every day all day and I was just trying to lose weight and I felt worse and worse and then they go okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one plus one equals two I'm gonna stop eating oxalates cold turkey and, and you go then, look on the internet and you find a list and you think okay i'm just gonna eat low oxalate food right, right. and for a lot of people i know uh, that takes the form of like the carnivore diet which is um yeah. Which is so bonkers, <laughs> but uh, again, nothing, nothing surprises me anymore. Everything is fair game, right? Um, but then what starts to happen is they start experiencing uh, almost like these physical withdrawal symptoms. So, so maybe you could explain a little bit this phenomenon of oxalate dumping, because I think you alluded to it a little bit earlier about how the oxalates store in the tissues, and then it goes back to this idea of homeostasis in the blood, right? the blood's always trying to keep this level of oxalate once it gets to a certain level. Well, I don't think oxalate's really regulated in the blood. I mean, it, 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 there is a certain sense in which, and I don't think they figured out exactly what it is, but there is some kind of sensor that senses when the blood levels get high and then it may secrete it to the gut. But exactly. there's also some signaling that's, looked for in the gut that says it's okay to do that. So there's kind of a two-way conversation going on here. All right. So if the microbes are there that can degrade it, then you're going to get more coming through. So there's some sort of signals that the microbes give the intestinal cells that say, we're here, we can do it. And, and, and then that encourages the oxalate to go from the blood into the intestine. And that's why uh, some people get like really bad diarrhea or, you know, they have some kind of change in their um, gastrointestinal function when they're dumping, but not everybody. And we certainly don't understand all the ins and outs of this because some people like I'm what's, what's called a skin dumper. It means that when I eat oxalate, I, it comes out my skin. My gastrointestinal system and eh. I mean it doesn't even notice what's going on but I I get I've had these terrible rashes all over and they look kind of like poison ivy but all over your body I mean it, for me and it's only on one side mostly which is weird and and uh, um, I have MS and my MS was on one side of my body affected and the other wasn't. And so, I mean, who knows what, all, what goes into all of this. But, but anyway, one of the things that was kind of peculiar is when I had a rash on my left leg and I, had, I did not get a rash at all on my right leg, okay, when this happened. Um, after it was over and the rash was gone, I looked down and I'm one of these people that has had coagulation issues. And so I had these little bruises kind of along my ankles and the bruises where I had the rash were gone. <sighs> That's after you stopped the oxalates? No, after, after the, the, the stump that created the big rash was gone. Mm -hmm. Then there was no more of the bruising stuff that was, had been there for years. Wow. It was gone, but it was still present on my right side because it didn't have that experience. Yeah. It was very localized to that place. And so there are a lot of things that we don't understand about this process. Why some people are skin dumpers, why some people are gastrointestinal. Some people are more urinary, you know, and, um, it, it might even be intense enough to create a kidney stone even uh, mm -hmm. when they are going through this process. And they may not have had a kidney stone until they started dumping and then suddenly they have a kidney stone. And it's not that we're inventing oxalate, it's that the oxalate was stored somewhere in their body. 
And we don't know that much about it, except through studying the literature on these people that had the genetic defect. And they basically found oxalate everywhere. And is that like a situation, like, for example, the kidney kind of like the gut where when you say, OK, I'm going to go cold turkey on these oxalates and then you start you, you basically cut off the supply and then the oxalate starts coming out of the body. Well, the kidneys like, well, where'd all these oxalates go? And then it starts pulling the oxalate from the is it from the well, blood? I don't into think the- it would be right to say it's pulling it out. It's just uh-huh. part of its normal biology to have sulfate transporters. Got gotcha. you. Exactly. Got you. Wow. Right. Right. We can't think about this stuff as being all that intentional, although I do think it is legitimate to think in our design that we were designed to tolerate a certain amount of oxalate. And we were also designed for the microbes that are in our gut to degrade them for us. And then what they didn't degrade, we would poop out, you know, 